This is the 2009 vehicle up on ramps to remove the bumper cover. It's not necessary to be up on ramps, but it makes access to the muffler a lot easier. If you have access to the Mercedes factory documentation, it really helps to use them at every step. We need to get this inner fender liner out of the way. So we're going to pull out the mushroom fasteners and just uh, pull this out with a pry tool. there's one more large mushroom fastener that is uh, upward from the bottom at the corner where the fender well joins the uh, body. So now with the rivets removed, we can go ahead and pull the liner out of the way. The reason we removed the fender liner was to be able to get a socket on this 10 millimeter head bolt that points vertically upward at this position. To get at the next identical 10 millimeter bolt, which faces downward from the inside, you have to open up the inside covers on each side of the vehicle, like this one on the left or driver side of US vehicles, which houses the subwoofer and the first aid kit. You can see the bolt here. And then we have to undo the cover on the other side. So the two bolts to get from the inside are marked here by the arrows. They're 10 millimeter head downward facing on the driver and passenger side respectively. Next are the so-called long nuts that protrude in from the rear of the vehicle. We just show the driver's side one here visible, uh, it's reachable through this round hole that's just below the grounding stud. The other side is nearly identical. Two more bolts to go. One underneath here, one underneath here. Let's have a look from under the vehicle. It's this bolt here and its counterpart on the other side. So we'll remove those two bolts, put something down uh, under the bumper cover and pull the bumper cover off.
So with the bumper cover off, we see the next thing to remove is the actual hitch assembly itself. It's a heavy steel casting. This uh, padding on the back of it is essentially high density uh, foam. In order to get to the nuts that go on the lower studs of the hitch assembly where it mates to the vehicle, you need to remove the muffler hanger bolts, uh, which are uh, two sets on the center line of the vehicle here and also uh, here on the other side. And then there are four other bolts, uh, two each, on the outboard corners of the vehicle. So with these hanger bolts removed, as I said before, we need a downward movement of the muffler to get some clearance. So with the hangers removed, we can actually get uh, quite a bit of movement just flexing the, uh, the mufflers uh, Plenty of room to get to the heat shield bolts now. In addition to clearing the heat shields from the bottom, we need to clear some room from the top as well, removing the spare tire tools, the spare tire, the carpeting, and so forth, till we get down to bare uh, metal to get access to the uh, upper nuts that hold the hitch in place and also to several uh, outward facing bolts. Mm -hmm. Also as you can see the uh, rear hatch sill needs to be removed. That's just two uh, uh, torque style bolts. I removed all the carpet uh, until the entire uh, sheet could be removed. It probably wasn't necessary to remove it all. The primary access that's needed is along the right and left edges in order to get to the uh, outboard facing uh, bolts that hold the uh, weight distributing part of the hitch. Now from the inside, there are some very large bolts to take out. These large bolts and there's two more on the other side. Those hold the horizontal braces and the nuts that are on the other side of these, where these bolts go through, these four, these actually protrude into the cabin. And there's one of them right here on the inside. This is where the door sill would be. There's another here under this cap. And then the outer ones are actually protruding inside. You have to reach inside these protective uh, trim boxes here because the connector is right there. On the right side, the bolt is there, but there's a module in the way, the signal acquisition module. And for that, we're going to be removing this ventilation panel to reach in and move the module out of the way to get to that nut. You can see in this 2009 model 
there's a black plastic box that's just clipped into that silver metal bracket. In this scene, I've popped the plastic module up out of the metal tray in order to see what the access to the mounting nut behind it uh, reveals. And you can see there's quite a restriction there getting to that nut. Ultimately, the bracket has to be unfastened from the floor of this space and swung at least partly out of the way and then that nut has to be removed. There's several common sense hitch harness connections to undo inside. This is the electric brake connector. And then previously I've unhooked the uh, ground connector from its bolt and the locking connector out of the uh, signal acquisition module here. Once all eight nuts that fasten onto the through studs and all four of the lateral bolts are loose, the hitch just pulls out on long rails that go into the frame. I had a very hard time with this. Ultimately, what freed it was pushing it all the way in and giving it a good running jerk out where the weight of the hitch pulled it clear of the opening. So this is the full hitch assembly removed from the vehicle. We're looking at it upside down. You can see the uh, connectors for the breakaway chains and so forth. The important thing to notice are the long horns that go up into the frame tubes and provide the weight distribution feature of the hitch. And you can see in these pictures those uh, large bolts are the outward facing bolts that you undo from the inside. This is the uh, bumper cover off the 09. You can see it's got the uh, nice cutaway, uh, including the metal trim. The uh, metal plate is just held by uh, four screws and a couple of uh, tabs. We'll uh, take that off. It's going to be moved to the new vehicle with some uh, uh, cutting to cut away the plastic underneath. There's a portion to be cut away here <clears throat> where the vehicles with a hitch have a notch in the bumper cover. So this metal portion 
was actually taken from the donor vehicle. This, this vehicle had a metal cover that went all the way up and covered this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the, uh, the cut line here to cut this. The factory hitch retrofit instructions include this same, uh, this same cut. And of course, uh, if you don't have a donor vehicle, you're actually cutting away the, uh, the metal as well as the plastic. But we're going to go ahead and mark this. And then just to help out for those that don't have a uh, won't have the metal guide, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a few uh, measurements here. So from the edge here, not the screw hole, but the edge to this metal is just about. Uh, five inches there and the width from one uh, one side of the job to the other from that metal edge to here is uh, 22 inches And uh, here at the shallower corners, the depth from there to the edge is about three inches. So since this is 22 across, it's sort of uh, 11 inches out from here, 11 inches out from there. Down three, down three, down five. And you're sort of marking that. Uh, that curve. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this with an appropriate uh, tool and then I'll fit the metal. The reason I knew I had good alignment here is there's actually a, a metal, uh, there's actually slots here where the metal goes through the plastic at various points and I've got a screwdriver stuck through the screw hole to make sure I maintain alignment. This is now the follow-up work on the hitchless uh, diesel. We've gone ahead and, for weight, taken the jack and such out. And then this needs to lift out. But first we're going to remove this sill by undoing its one uh, Torx bolt here and you can see that although the 2011 doesn't have the bolts going into the uh, hitch rails it's all pre-drilled to receive the weight distributing hitch this is removing the uh, upper left nut for the uh, bumper mounting stud Now the inner nut on the right hand side. So we've removed these exhaust hanger bolts and also two others that are further down and forward on this 2011. The hanger is uh, here on the 2011. The whole reason we've done this is to be able to bring the exhaust and muffler down a bit 
because these heat shields are blocking access to the nuts that are on the back side of these studs here. This is the bumper assembly looking from below. These are the studs from that that protrude through. The nuts are right here, but these heat shields are in the way. So you have to lower the exhaust to be able to get into this space to remove the small nuts that hold the heat shield in place. Then the heat shields just slide out, you loosen the nuts and you're done. Okay, let's just get oriented here. This is the rear of the uh, non-hitch vehicle. So this is just the light duty uh, bumper and not the hitch. It, it's held just as the hitch is by four large studs here on each side. So eight total, four and four. The inside of those studs is held by one nut here that's inside the tray where the spare tire or tire changing components are. The other nut is accessed by going into the side panel on one side or the other and it's visible and accessible inside there. Right now I'm going to put a nut on just a couple of turns on each of the upper one per side on the upper bolts here because I'm going to go underneath and remove the, the four that are now accessible with the removal of the uh, heat shields because I don't want any risk that this heavy assembly is going to fall on me so those nuts will retain it. Let's have a look from underneath at the nuts that are now accessible with the uh, with the uh, assembly removed. So it's really quite simple. These nuts, one here, uh, one here on each side have to come out. And then of course, after I loosen those safety, the safety nut that I just put on, this rear bumper will just pull off. Side, I okay. Think. So the idea is we're going to lift together by here and the bottom. Okay. And the idea is to guide these into these holes. So it's very heavy, but not for two people. Okay. Go ahead and up. Now let's see if we can get it in the holes. Yes. That's all I needed. Thank you. That's it? Yeah. I should okay. be able to get the rest. Okay, so with the harness tie wrapped now back to the hitch, we have exit on the passenger side. The new harness has its own grommet, so this grommet can come out. And then all of this gets fed through into the interior compartment where it's accessed through the side panel.
but there's actually two connections that are fairly close in the back here that I think will be most easily accessed by removing this vent. So let me pop that open from the inside even as I feed the short leads through there. It's a ground connection and a uh, uh, plug-in uh, green connection. I think it might be a ground, I'm not sure. Okay, to get this vent out, you just depress the catches on the inside. Okay, here's where we're going to do a little fabrication. This is the connector on the original vehicle's uh, hitch harness. This plugs into the uh, signal acquisition module into connector 15. You can see it's a, a two rows of uh, six pins and then four tabs that go into a corresponding slot. And this is the locking mechanism. This is uh, part number 164-440-6434. But the distance in this harness from the grommet that comes through the outer shell of the vehicle to that signal acquisition module is quite, quite short. You can see the, the length is just from, uh, from the grommet here following to this end here. It's about a foot long because in the donor vehicle that uh, donated this harness, the signal acquisition module is right inside the shell of the vehicle, just inside the, the uh, vent. So this length needs to be about four feet longer to reach the new location of the signal acquisition module under the rear seat. So I ordered a different harness, the one that was specifically for my VIN. It had the same length cable, but a different connector here that didn't match my signal acquisition module. So what I'm going to do is just cut these six wires through here, take some multi-conductor uh, cable that I have uh, and just solder in uh, six, uh, a four, four or five foot extension, just running each conductor through, matching them up, soldering them one at a time with uh, heat shrink. And we'll basically have a modified uh, harness with this one having some extra length. I think that's the cleanest way to solve the problem. This is the new fabrication from the hitch connector along the harness that goes under the hitch, under the horizontal bar of the hitch, through the grommet that goes into the shell of the vehicle. There's a green plug that plugs in just inside where that vent and shell are. And then we have inside the vehicle where the fuses and relays are just immediately uh, inside on the passenger side in the US right rear and then we have the power source in the form of the fuse that taps in right into that rear fuse box 
And then here we have the point where the uh, signal acquisition modules connector had been. And we have spliced in six conductors of 22 gauge wire for five feet all the way up to the original connector ready. So this will now snake forward and reach the relocated in the 2011 signal acquisition monitor in the, uh, uh, in the vehicle. Is to reroute the new extended uh, SAM module forward so we can see that there's uh, wiring that runs underneath this black uh, cover and even underneath going uh, forward. This here is uh, my gooseneck magnetic pickup stuck through from the under seat position to show that that is accessed directly to where the status uh, signal acquisition module is. So we're just going to go ahead and route that extended cable through that uh, path and plug it into the SAM. Okay, so that harness is now fed uh, from the interior underneath this black strip. I just put my little uh, pry tool and, and pried it open to be able to slip it in. And then right at the juncture at the seat, it comes out under the finished edge there and routes under where my snake had come through. And then by uh, taping that and, and pulling it, it made it very easy to pull through. Here we are inside the vehicle where the status uh, signal acquisition module is uh, with the connector. And we're going to plug in right here into connector N15 and then flip down the little uh, pivoting lock lever that's on the uh, this is a lock mechanism once you get it in you flip it uh, shut to retain it Just a little quick time footage to show after you've had them off and on a couple of times. The bumper cover really isn't that difficult to install or remove. It's really just the fender liners and the uh, both upward and downward facing bolts that are uh, to the side and the long nuts which protrude through and then the two uh, bolts in the rear. So uh, I think the final reinstallation took me uh, 10 minutes by the clock. Okay, a package I've been waiting for has arrived. This is the uh, Hella brand uh, relay, and here's the uh, part number for the uh, 2006 and later Mercedes. This is uh, uh, a relay that's not uh, installed standard unless the vehicle has a, a hitch. So I can go ahead and do the final uh, hookups here. So let's go ahead and uh, get inside 
And what I need to do is to plug the uh, fuse into the third position down here from uh, from the top so let's try and get a good focus here so not the red one not the purple one but the brown one um, that's for the trailer hitch itself the purple one is for the trailer brake so what we're going to be plugging in there is a floating uh, fuse connector find it in here this is what this looks like with its tongue the tab that goes into the slot there and then a little catch and it comes with the fuse pre-installed here so this is going to go again into the third slot uh, down so that would be this one here And that's all there is to it. That's now uh, equipped with a 20 amp fuse. And then the socket, the vacant socket for the uh, hitch relay is right here next to this, uh, to the plug. So we'll go ahead and take the relay out. And this is the actual relay. The same relay is used in many, uh, for many functions. Uh, in, in the car so it's kind of a utility uh, relay and we'll just plug that in right there and that completes the electrical wiring that we can do here there is one connector that's still loose here and that's this uh, green connector here some vehicles have the same green connector coming from this harness. Certainly the 09 donor vehicle did. But checking the schematic, um, that's the wiring for the trailer brake, the electric trailer brake. And in the later vehicles, like this one, the uh, actual four conductor, the four pin connector for the trailer brake is all the way up in the driver's side footwell where it can be near the connection point and then the green connector is brought back uh, here if at all but not all the vehicles are pre-wired for that so this vehicle does not have that when we're done enabling everything I'll have all the trailer sense detection and such but I won't have an electric brake control wired on this vehicle now for the final steps, the vehicle does have to go to the dealer to use their STAR Diagnostic Assistance System to program the car to activate the various hitch-related features. I'm giving here the uh, procedure that is followed, the dealer procedure for the trailer hitch retrofit, and the values that need to be set uh, within the CGW and the rear Sam for the vehicle that I have done here, the 2009 to 2011. Your vehicle should be similar. Credit where credit is due, I rely on quite a few web resources in addition to my factory documentation. And in particular, at the Ben's World site is an excellent document I discuss here with the technical details of the uh, factory hitch information. That information is otherwise very difficult to, uh, to find. Also be aware uh, information is continually subject to change, especially around the area of LED trailer lights. Mercedes seems to be doing some work in that area. Best of luck with your ML retrofit.